Hi, and welcome. So it's Saturday, and I decided to compare JavaScript uh, speed against Rust. And I made a little JavaScript application that kind of doesn't mean anything, but it features some things. So let me go through it fast. So this is just an array which has two items of kind of different content type. So the value here is a string and here is a number, right? And then I'm deciding to allocate a, um, a variable to just store um, accumulated um, number value and I'm deciding to iterate like 100 times over the same array I define on the line 1 and then I'm checking if the type is 1 which is for a number on the line 7 you see that and I just add that value to the sum and then I log the uh, time it actually took to execute this kind of code. Let me make sure I write it, yeah. So then I'm running the code and it takes like 199 fractions of a millisecond. Okay, cool. So the sum is 200, that's fine. Now let's go to uh, Rust implementation of that. So I kind of decided to make an enum, which is the right way to um, define a structure for uh, item type uh, that I want to input inside an array, right? So I do exactly that uh, in the variable TST, same like in uh, JavaScript way over here. I add uh, two items in the same order, uh, something with a value high, which is a string, and something with a value two, which is a number. So this compiles well, and I also allocate a mutable variable where I'm gonna store the uh, number representation of a test item. Then I'm starting to see what time I started to, to run the code, then I iterate over the same 100 uh, times um, the same iteration for, for um, accumulating the number representations with a match instead of the type uh, like checker like here, right? I'm gonna talk about this later. So I do that, and I kind of get the time where uh, we stopped, and I output that. So the code is almost exactly the same. I run the code, and it takes like 21 microseconds. So it's almost like, uh, what, five times, six times faster, which is cool. I mean, it, it is a compiled language. But then I, um, so after I made this, I decided to actually go nuts slightly. And uh, I decided to see um, what would be the time difference on a larger scale. I mean, 100 is just fine for iteration count. But let's add a few more zeros so it now it's now 10,000 let me short let me make sure that I actually write it Whoop. demo time issues yeah this is the right way to develop you fail all the time so I'm going to the iteration thing and add two more zeros and so here I've got five over there, I've got five. Nice. So let us see how fast will 
JavaScript, run the same code. So now it's 8 milliseconds. Since it's JavaScript, it takes different amount of time every time you run it. So now it's 6 milliseconds and uh, 9 milliseconds, so average is like 7, 8, right? What about um, Rust? Let us build it and run. So it's built <clears throat> and it takes one millisecond for the same operation stuff. Well, it's 10 times faster, not 10 times. Well, you see like five, yeah, whatever, and better mass. So there's some time difference. Let us run it again. So speed is relatively the same. It's not as dramatic as this thing, which is obvious. This is fine. Well, let us go in even more nuts. I will add two more additional zeros. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So the same amount of iterations. Let us see how fast the JavaScript runs. So it runs 15 milliseconds, which is relatively a lot already. Let us run this. And now it runs on the Rust side even longer. So this is interesting because it seems like creating an iterator for a vector is taking quite a lot of time on a larger scale, which is something that maybe we will not uh, worry about sometime in the future if I decide to develop stuff in Rust for my own stuff. But, as a test case, I do actually want to check if uh, switching the uh, four statements like this would uh, solve anything. So, here I'm kind of doing the same thing, it's just I allocate iterator once and then I would do the same things over um, a static um, for loop. So technically it should be the same code-wise, but it took slightly less. I'm not sure why is it taking so much time. But this, is, this is actually very interesting. So let us do the same thing in uh, JavaScript. So I'm gonna take that here, put it here, and move it slightly there. So again, logic-wise, the code is really the same. But on Rust, switching uh, places of uh, this iterator with a static, um, static uh, f uh, range of numbers, for, for Rust it literally halved execution time. Let us see if Node.js does it well, technically, Node.js is the same, so probably what's happening is uh, since JavaScript is really garbage collecting language, language and V8 engine for JavaScript is optimizing frequently used uh, structures in a way, so maybe there's something going on between like uh, this representation of code and the optimized uh, virtual machine stuff code which is faster in a way than the core stuff that I'm using here but it's actually really interesting that in some cases um, Rust behaves slower on the on the larger scale of things but <clears throat> I wanted to talk about like uh, the way I'm 
checking against the types kind of here. I'm quite sure the enumeration thing in the end generates some sort of a tuple, right? So the first item I am passing here might be identified as a ID of some sort, which would uh, um, like navigate us to a specific type when the actual thing is run in the match statement, right? So this is why I decided to use a type of integer here in JavaScript. So I was hoping that kind of the functionality and like the execution time would be kind of the same, but yeah, as you see on smaller scale, the iteration thing it is working very, very fast, but on this scale somehow it's uh, it's falling behind in a way. So there you go. Um, this is one of the first times I am actually trying to uh, come up with tests between JavaScript and uh, Rust to see which is faster and uh, easier to write and uh, read. Um, I find Rust fascinating that it kind of resembles JavaScript in a, in a lot of ways and more descriptive maybe. So if this was written in TypeScript, then it would almost be the same as this Rust code in, in this small case. But, but again, uh, pick your battles, right? So, but this is actually fascinating that uh, creating many, many, many iterations and uh, checking against types is actually slow on the uh, Rust side. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm doing something incorrect here. Maybe um, allocations of a variable here from from the uh, iterator is slow. I'm not sure. Uh, this is really interesting to to see. Anyway, um, somewhere Rust is really fast. Somewhere it is not. Uh, I'm quite aware that maybe I could um, translate this vector into a normal array of some sort and statically check against it. But here I specifically also decided to use a iterator representation of uh, array and uh, traversing uh, iterator specific way of uh, array just to see if like references to next element in the future would uh, uh, work slower because well in this manner it is faster because you know where when to stop but in uh, uh, iterator uh, implementation the for loop has to kind of search for next element and see if there is a next element each time we go inside here. So that is kind of slower, it's considered to be slower. So I'm using like similar techniques, I guess. The same with uh, types and values. I could use like a check here, like a if item value type of is number, I would do some sort of uh, calculation, but that wouldn't be, wouldn't be fair. I mean, it would check against some sort of type or maybe a string internally, and it would be even slower. So I wanted to be as honest about this as I could possibly be. Anyway, this is a shock actually to me that in this case, Rust is slower, but again, I'm not as experienced in Rust yet. And uh, Rust is doing a bit more actually here. Actually, let's check. Let us check another thing. Maybe I can make the code even simpler. Let me use the if statement here. If If, uh, what was the, 
since I'm not uh, experienced, uh, I might make some errors, but uh, if and well, if let, if let TST type, oh damn it, let me fail, let me fail, if let TST type num then the value I made equals item then then it would do this uh, enter space so this happens and this is removed yeah there's less code this way so this should be removed so let me move that slightly just clean it up bam uh, yeah it looks pretty let me see if it works first, because Rust is kind of hard. Run. All right. So I removed uh, extra checker for something else. So it's not looking at str in the match statement, and it still takes roughly the same amount of time. So my initial guess was incorrect still. But this is fascinating. Yeah. Maybe it is best to translate the vector into array and traverse it, not with iterator, but with but with um, with actual for loops with fixed size. But this is readable as fuck. This is readable. I mean, I like it that it looks like JavaScript way over here. Who knew? Who knew? But there are benefits to Rust. This this means nothing. This means nothing. This is executable things now. This is a binary now somewhere. And it like waits waits like uh, less than a megabyte. And for JavaScript to run, we need entire infrastructure of Node.js being present on the system. So yeah, that's a fine um, ex example or uh, test that. I was using to get more intimate with Rust. This is fascinating. This is interesting. Well, anyway, I hope you like it. Cheers.